Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Nintendo Show, Episode 6. I'm your co-host, Devin Moon, and with me, as always, the recently healed Trevor Payne. Back from the dead, and I'm excited to be here. He has come from his glorious mountaintop to give us that goodness. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you're, you're my Moses. I just want you to know that. You are cool. my Moses, you know Trev. Well, you're my Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I have no idea. I, that was the first thing that came to my head. Just let me Sweet. have this. I know, you can have it. Thank, thank you for the Shrek and Moses. Those two belong together uh, yep. in the same the dynamic duo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get into the news. Mr. Miyamoto's magical news, as we Woo. call it. We, we have five items on the list this week. We do need a jingle. We do. We do desperately need it. Mr. Mi, 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 Miyoto something. Come up, come up with something good, Trev. Here, you got some jingles in that head. Dee, 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 dee. Oh. Woo! Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh, that like wasn't it. even me. That was a recording. That's, oh, that's that was re- how oh. incredible that was. Yeah, that was really good. Very nice. <laughs> uh, number one on this news of news is uh, game addictions. We're going to talk about some game addictions. So, Nintendo Life reports, a new research study conducted by Oxford University has found insufficient evidence to suggest that gaming should be classified as a clinical disorder. It notes that the game that gamers who have heavily affected by the problem are likely to be suffering from wider, unrelated issues. The study comes as a direct response to the World Health Organization's decision to classify gaming addiction as a mental health condition. Rather than describing gaming as an addiction in its own right, the study suggests that those engaged in dysfunctional gaming are likely to have underlying frustrations and wider psychological functioning issues outside of games. Dr. Netton Winston, senior lecturer of the University of blah, 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 says we urge healthcare professionals to look more closely at underlying factors such as psychological satisfaction, everyday uh, frustrations to understand why a minority of people feel like they must engage in gaming in an obsessive way. Hmm. That is that. Phil me asks regarding the news. Whoa. Great name. Oh, actually, it's pill me, not fill me. <laughs> so you got I saw, I saw, I saw an H. I saw an H. <laughs> I was like, Dr. Phil? Yes, Maybe? It. Nope, like it's it. pill me. I uh, asked, sorry about that. Why is it that video games suffer from a certain stigma that no other form of media suffers uh, from? From what I can gather, from very light Google search, there are no re- recognized disorders of watching too much Netflix or TV or reading too many books. Why is it that video games are seen so negatively by so many people? Also, do you believe that some can suffer from such disorders? So, Trev, what do you think about gaming disorders in general? What is your thought on that? Do you think Dude, is a thing? So, like, all right. This is, let's dive into it because like... Come on, doctor, let's do this thing. <laughs> okay, this is do- me putting my Dr. Payne hat on, okay? So licensed, unofficial yeah. doctor. Licensed professional. Dr. Mario. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I honestly, like, I don't think it's a video game disorder. I think it's just like what was stated here that it's something else in this like person's life that they yeah. deem to be an addict of video games or things like that because... Uh, Just like this question asks is, you know, then why aren't we labeling too much Netflix or too much music or too much playing guitar or too much of honestly anything? Because everything, you know, can you can do too much of a thing. And I agree with too much video games like you do need a happy balance to, you know, I think that's good and healthy. Um, But I think it's deep down like it could be um, some kind of uh, like. Uh, stress issues or depression or other things underlining and this Mm. is what those individuals do is play tons of games to try to escape or something like that so i don't think saying video games are the problem i think we need to look deeper than just blame it on video games because that has been something since the dawn of video games uh it's the scapegoat Every yeah. time, like any time, oh, yeah. it's like, oh, it's the video games. The video games are making people violent. It's the video games that are making our children fat. It's our video. You know, it's everything. Everything <laughs> yeah. is a video games and problem. that's the problem. But it yeah. is not. That's the thing. Yeah. And I really think it's more of an underlining issue and not the video games themselves, because I really think video games are healthy and they're great for your mind. They're great for problem solving, for stimulation and also mm-hmm. just for leisure and relaxation and things like that, too. So yeah. but. Again, 
you know, you got to have a happy medium, you know? Yeah, I agree. Like I've seen, to be honest, I have seen people that seem addicted, you know, in the gaming sphere. I've seen people that are, you know, especially when I think of a gaming addiction, I've always thought of, I always, my brain goes to like, wow, for some reason, like the people that I've seen that have played wow, especially like in its glory days and like when everyone was really on it, some reason in my head, I just, I saw friends and stuff that were just like, dedicated to that 24 right. <laughs> seven like it was just life for them you know and for sure. me i under like like you said there's too much of anything and you could see that maybe there's an addictive quality to it but i don't know if it needs to be like quantified like they have quantified it because like people are addicted to just the same or i've seen people nowadays especially are binge watching like crazy on netflix and netflix. stuff or and they you can't have- stop yeah, or you, <laughs> you have know? people that like, hey, we sit around and watch TV all night, every all night. night. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. like, how come that's so? Are we gonna yeah. label a TV addiction? Like, yeah. but my thing is, is like all those things. I agree. Like, I think there needs to be mm-hmm. that healthy medium. But the thing is, is like, I don't attack just video games. If you if you're gonna do a blanket, like do like yeah. a tech addiction, or I don't, I have no yeah, idea. Something. Like, it's. Yeah. It's a little silly. I, it is I weird. When I remember when they came out with that official, like, hey, this is a disorder, video game disorder. I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, now I'm going to hear about it from, you know, grandma and stuff like uh-huh. that. So, <laughs> you know. No, yeah, I gotcha. And it's, and it's just so culturally nasty. Like video games, well, I know people would say that, especially when we hear other podcasts that I've heard from, uh, they usually like, yeah, we're getting into the, you know, the minds of the people, but we're in the Midwest and those guys are like sitting in like Silicon Valley. And yeah, guess what? Over in your bubble. Yeah, that's totally true. Probably you have people all around you that are playing games and stuff. And I, yes, it's really popular and it's more popular, like esports have more popularity than some sports out there right now. Sure. But in general, then when, when people talk about video games, like that don't play them, they think they're weird, like too violent. And that they just do not understand the violence in them at all. And that they are a waste of time. <laughs> like, yeah. But it's okay to waste your time with movies. It's okay to waste your time with like reading, which like some reading, I understand you can get some education from it. But there's plenty of books that are yeah. fiction that have no learning at all that are just <laughs> as fiction as video games. You right. know, like it's just so silly. Like. I don't get the the uppityness of movies that are like we are art, we are above you, <laughs> or like oh we can watch people get shot to death or blown yeah. the crap out of, and that's totally fine. But when you're doing it in a video game, no, you're doing it, so that makes it bad. But in yeah. my head, I'm like, no, I'm not doing it. It's the character I'm playing that's, you know, I'm role playing as a character. I am part of like, this for me it's not almost me. as like yeah. as a movie yeah it's i don't true. know well it's and weird. then also it's just like i don't know like people don't get after people for like just being so dedicated to like a sports team and <laughs> yeah. they're watching like every oh nfl gosh. game or whatever it is but that's like yeah. socially acceptable so yeah. everybody just says oh that's okay because it's sports it's good but it's like <laughs> you are sitting there on your butt just yes. watching at least video games you're <laughs> thinking and you're interacting and you're yeah. problem solving and yep. you're part of this story and that's my i, I got some beef dev i got yeah, some dude no i feel big you. Old it's fat cow beef with this yeah <laughs> That's true. Watching the people that, and there are people that I would say are almost more or at least a similar addiction to sports. I've seen people that just sure. watch That's and watch their life. and watch. That's all they and do. That is their life. Yes. Playing like, you know, as a coach on their freaking couch. Yeah. But like, it's, it's, there is no, like you said, there's no thought process. There is nothing more no, satisfaction. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's it's... no satisfaction. It's the same with the movies. There, you are absorbing. You can get information from it. But guess what? You can get similar information from video games. Yes. But and you also have are real are experiences that you are yes. a part of. Like, I don't know. And it's then so also, weird. not to mention the social aspect of it. So many yeah. games we play nowadays is online with others. This is how I connect with my brother, Dylan. This is how I connect with my kids. This is how I connect with my friends at work. Like it is a way for us to socialize while doing something else. And so people are always thinking like all these shut in nerds sitting at their computers. (laughs) It's like, no, dude, like for all you know, like I'm 
actually having a lot of fun with my friends and family and people. And yep. it's, it's honestly, it's amazing. It's cool that we have that. Yeah. Um, anyways. Whew. Yeah. And I think ha- as like, ma- as like, I know it's not like a male only thing, but I noticed as men, usually they like to like, kind of, I don't know, like gather around an activity. Does that yeah. make sense? Sure. Like we don't chat all the time <laughs> we'd like to go around a thing and then chat around the thing does that make sense sure. and so video games is that monolith that thing we're going to that we're chatting around it's yeah. our campfire it's our whatever it's our like it's our thing like to do it. it's our thing mm. to do and then to chat around yeah. that and so i totally agree that's a lot of my favorite moments with my dad was with video games yep. and what i go to like these uh you know I don't know, going to like the other gatherings where they talk down about gaming, especially like, I don't know, in my head, it's like church stuff or other places where the, I go to these gatherings with other people that don't have that same experience. Yeah, that don't understand. And, yeah. And they're like, oh, no, dude, games are awful. Like parents should be doing anything with that stuff. But I'm like, that's how I connected with my dad. And I yep. really enjoyed it. Like yeah. my dad connected with all my friends because of that. And, right. uh, you know, and then they got to know him better. And I got to know him better. And it just, again, and how cool that is you got the to build that, yeah. that relationship. And honestly, with you and I, Deb, growing up, that was <laughs> yeah, like our connection thing. too. So when exactly. we get together, we would want to, we'd have these little mini podcasts, non-podcasts. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, same thing with my family, my brothers. That's how we played and connected my sister. My, my dad was a part of it. And then our families would get together and we would mm-hmm. play. And it's, yeah. yeah. So I think it's more than what people think. And um, I really think that, I like that they're looking into this, saying that, you know what, it's probably not a video game disorder. It's more of an underlining issue. And you know what, if it's for kids, maybe it's a parenting issue. Maybe well, yeah. parents and, need to step in and be like, "Hey, you got to go do something else, dog. Yeah, go outside. Yeah. Go do yeah, something. Exa- yeah, like exactly. be a parent and say what yeah. they have to do." So, anyways, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, cool. And that's true. Yep, I agree. It's like seriously. We, I get it. I get it. I understand. Everything could be addictive. Blah, blah, yes. blah. Here we go. So, yes. Uh, freedom to experiment. That is the Nintendo action, uh, quote, action. Uh, this is our next story. In a rare Western interview with Nintendo, somewhat recent president, Sh- oh, here we go. Here we go. Shinataro Furuka. Furuka? Wa? I don't know. Started. I like it. Stated stated the quote, Nintendo is Nintendo because of our games, characters, and IP. So giving our teams the freedom to experiment with new ideas is something I strongly agree with. Expansions can't happen without the freedom to try something new and the courage to step into unfamiliar territories. This, of course... This is, of course, refreshing to hear, especially when Nintendo somewhat murky past with experimental consoles like the Wii U and the Virtual Boy. So, Hippy Dippy asks, do you think Nintendo is experimenting enough with new ideas or do you think they have become too reliant on old franchises? So, okay, Dev, I want you to to answer this one first. What do you think, dude? Oh, I think, hmm. I think they are experimenting uh, in some ways now. I don't think they're hits, though, to be honest. But I, I don't know if they're anyone if they're going to hit it like they did with Mario or with Link, you know, with the Zelda franchise, with Donkey Kong, all those IPs that are solid and embedded into our brains. Uh, I think the only one that I can think of that is most recent that is in that vein is maybe splatoon that's like their most successful new ip um but i think in general i think they are trying new things um and i think they try new things in their old franchises too uh i don't think every mario game is the same and i don't think every zelda game is the same i just think as far as new ideas go they just haven't hit that home run for me i think xenoblade is cool splatoon is cool but i uh, nothing has hit Mario levels. Nothing has hit that level sure. yet. But I don't know. That might be too. Maybe we just uh, maybe our expectations are too high. Like right, right, we're expecting like an IP of that caliber, which I don't think of any franchise has a character or any game developer has a character that is as known as Mario. Mario is probably 
He might even be more popular than Mickey Mouse now. Maybe like, it's possible. He, he, like Mickey Mouse isn't barely in any cartoons or anything nowadays. So right. it's possible that Mario is even more known to us than that. So I I don't know if we just have crazy expectations. I don't know. What do you think, Trev? I think we we might have crazy expectations. But so like, for instance, they're talking about how, you know, uh, being experimental. And I think their experimental stuff that I really like is what they do experiment with when it comes to the hardware, the console side of ah, things. Yeah, yeah. Like the whole Switch idea and the detachable Joy-Cons and the docking, mm-hmm. undocking, all this stuff. That was a great experiment that I feel paid off and uh just changed the whole game when it came to to video games and consoles mm-hmm. and things like that um I, they tried with the wii u i you know i think there were some cool ideas but it didn't quite hit but like even with the motion yeah. stuff on the wii they experimented it honestly wasn't my favorite but it did bring no. in a whole new uh yeah. group of gamers to start playing video games so like oh you know there's always all this cool uh experimentation that they do that i respect and really like yeah um on the game side i think you're right it seems like there's been a lot of games splatoon arms um I don't know, yeah. one, two, switch, different <laughs> things like that. Yeah. I don't yeah. feel like are as good as any of their old IPs, their old, uh, mm-hmm. you know, franchises and things like that. Yeah. They're, uh, I think the closest one, I think you're right, is Splatoon. Like, I genuinely like that game. That yeah, game is is really good. I think yeah. there's some, like, online connectivity stuff that they need to play around with a little bit more. But yeah. overall, I think that was a really cool new, uh, you know, new franchise that i hope that they keep expanding on yeah i agree i think and you're right i think as far as experimentation it's not only in video games like labo is crazy like labo is insane like that's when we when we heard like a crazy person made that up yeah yeah like it's insane like when we heard of labo we all thought cardboard legos what why nintendo (laughs) what time out and i put my (laughs) console inside of it yeah yeah it's it's crazy but yeah. cool not for me but i could see no. like a kid being super into it oh yeah definitely like it's it like and it's great for families it's like you can like build the thing together and play a game for two seconds that's not great but <laughs> you play it and hey you know it like it's a crazy strange idea you know and only nintendo that i could think like i wouldn't think xbox would be like yeah Homeboy, we got some cardboard. We got cardboard. We're going to play your first person shooters with your cardboard. (laughs) Yeah. Get your Master Chief gun. (laughs) You'll put it on. (laughs) Homeboy, it's going to be great. Come on over. Uh, No, if Xbox did that, if they showed that on their like (laughs) E3 stage, people would riot. Yeah. People would would be be like, what are you doing? But Nintendo does it. And it's like, yeah, it's okay. That's because they do wacky crap and they've set that expectation. And and I I respect it a lot. I don't always think it sticks, but I think I think it's cool that they experiment with the hardware. So, yeah, I agree. So another question in this vein, what is your favorite of the new uh, Nintendo IP uh, of the last decade? This comes from who knocks? Yeah, one who knocks. And he says, which one's your favorite? Uh, The examples he gave of this decade is Xenoblade, Splatoon, ARMS, Wonderful 101, Astral Chain, 1-2 Switch, Nintendo Land, Labo, or Ring Fit Avenger, Adventure. After <laughs> I seeing wish it this was list, Ring Fit, <laughs> yeah, dude, Avengers, <laughs> Avengers, <laughs> yeah, that'd be sweet. After seeing this list, would you prefer Nintendo make new IP or work on existing IP? Hmm. Honestly, like I want them to keep trying, so I want new. Like I don't yeah. want them to spend too much time with any of these because I, I, you know, like Astral Chain, I thought was kind of cool. Uh, Did you play Splatoon, it all? So I played a little bit. I need okay. to dive into it. Like it looks beautiful. I just, yeah, I, I'm not too sure about it. Okay. Yeah. Cause I've heard good things about it from like everyone else, but I wasn't right. sure myself and I wanted to try it because I'm a Bayonetta guy, but I sure. wasn't sure. Yeah. Yeah. I want to so, give it a little, a little bit more time before I give like my, my for sure, like yeah. I hate it or love I hate it. This. I feel <laughs> yeah. kind of in the middle right now with Splatoon. Yeah. I want them to definitely try again and keep playing with that. Cause I think yeah. that has a lot of uh, future in it, but with yeah, all the other definitely. stuff, man, eh, let it drop and move on. Y- yeah, I think so too. Uh, people, some reason people are all about that Nintendo Land. I was like, what? For me, like I understand it was twenty dollars, <laughs> but man, I really did not like that game. No, I thought that was like one of the worst Wii U games. And it, it was so hard to get like enough people to play enough people to, to make yeah. it fun. And yeah, I agree. 
Oh man, Nintendo Land. I'm sorry. Whoever's <laughs> trying to change history on that one, that one sucked. Uh, Labo. I think Labo's cool. I think they just need to like twick, like get the game aspect a little more, uh, like work on the game aspect aspect more, and actually like add. Yeah. Like I know they did like Mario Kart Eight support later in kind of stuff, but maybe like do a Nintendo franchise game like a Zelda or something. Uh, like a link crossbow training. I don't know. Like yeah, something gonna, like sure. in that vein, you know, like try to have, it's just weird that they haven't used their IP for that, but whatever. Uh, yeah. I would like to see them do new stuff. Like I think none of these probably need a sequel ring fit adventure. I've heard is good. And I think sure. like if I was an exercise guy in that kind of in those games, I would probably do it. But yeah, Splatoon for sure. Uh, t- the second one was really good. First one's good. Xenoblade, I think, is a good franchise. It's all yeah, it's already it's been franchised. So right, that one's kind of been around a little bit longer than yeah, kind than of the others. these other ones, right? Yeah, definitely. So yes, that is it for the Nintendo. Go go out and experiment, my experiment, my sweet little experiment, <laughs> experiments. Man, it's amazing I have a podcast. Um, <laughs> so Outer Worlds uh, Switch coming in 2020. So oh my gosh, yes. The, yeah, the Outer Worlds released this week, uh, or last week, sorry, on the Xbox, PlayStation, and PC, and who has received positive reviews. The Metacritic score of 86. With the game's release coming, uh, comes the lingering quest- question, when will the Outer Worlds release on the Switch? According to the publisher, Private Division, you can expect the game soon, uh, sometime in 2020. Games Radar speculates that the game will be released five months from now, based on the length it took uh, the Porthouse Virtuous to do the port of Dark Souls Remastered to the Switch. So Virtuous is responsible for the Outer Worlds port, uh, obviously. Um, so the question, have you played our outer worlds yet, Trev? Have you tried it out? So all? I have it installed cause I have a game pass, a game pass ultimate where uh, yeah, I, yeah. on my PC, I can download all those games and I've had it pre like installed, ready to go. I just yeah. haven't had find found the time to dive in quite yet. Yeah. I want to so bad, but yes. then also part of me kind of wanna wants to wait for the switch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dude, like Dude, I don't know yeah. why my brain does that because my PC no. will make it look so much better. Yeah. Uh, but dude, to have it like handheld, I don't know why. Like, I almost prefer, I'm like, I want everything on Switch. I'll deal with a little bit of graphic yeah. uh, D res to, to enjoy this yep. game on the go. Yeah, so. I think I'm I'm with you on that one. I have played it just because I have the same thing. I have that Xbox Game Pass Ultimate thing. And that is like, dude, if you guys have an Xbox, get the Game Pass. That is, is such a good um, deal. Such a good deal. Holy like, it's cow. insane the things that you're playing. Like, you're like, okay, cool. This is amazing. Like, you get Outer Worlds day one, and you're playing a game that is an 86 on a Metacritic, and it's amazing. Yeah, like, and so, it's a $60 game. It's like... yeah. Yeah, it's Game insane. Pass is such a good deal. Dude, There's so many so good, good games on it. I love yeah. it because I have it for like, so we, all right, <laughs> I'm going to sound like a broken individual. I have four <laughs> Xboxes in our house, okay? Four? <laughs> yeah, okay. Hear me out, Dev. I have all right, do it. mine. I have an Xbox uh, One X, and then okay. all my kids have their own Xboxes. Okay, So gotcha. that then we all jump online and play together. So it's something that we yeah. do together a lot. But the nice thing is, is with Game Pass, a lot of the games that we'll end up playing together, w- with Game Pass, we are all able to download it because we're on a big family thing. Oh, that's and nice. it's so much cheaper oh, than dude. going and buying $60 games for four freaking consoles. That is so, a good... Dude, I never thought of that. That is a good point. Like for awesome. family stuff like that, that is awesome. That's yes. great. Yeah. So I've played. So I've played this game. I played Outer Worlds at least for the like a at least a couple hours. What do you um, think? I, I, it's really good, dude. It's like Fallout, like in the in the aspect that like it's the first person. Like so, it's like Fallout Three, not the old ones. So it's like Fallout Three or Vegas okay. or whatever. It, yeah. it looks like a Fallout game, but well, and this is done by the developers of New Vegas, yeah. so Obsidian, exactly. Right? Yeah, Obsidian. Uh, yeah, very popular RPGs, guys. These are the guys, the guys on this team did their original uh, Fallout game, so like Fallout One and Two, I think. Oh, that's and amazing. somehow cool. I went over to Bethesda, and then they did Vegas. Anyways, really great stuff. Um, I it reminds me though more of like old school Knights of the Old Republic or Bioware games. Yeah, that's There's, what I've heard. It's so cool. Like you have a party with you. So very Bioware-esque. It's not like Fallout where it's a lonely adventure. You right. have a party with you. 
Um, they talk with you, you interact with them, but in the, in the dialogue is the persuade and the, uh, you can force your way into things. So that's very Bioware esque. Yeah. And it fill and the conversations I'm having are so, they just are bring me back to like an older version or an older game style that it just seems lost to me, or I just haven't played forever. And mm. it is so nice to just kind of get into like an old Bioware game, <laughs> like an yeah, old Bioware game with a Bioware. Fall, yeah, with a, with a Fallout coat, and it is just so. And it, like the writing is really well done, very entertaining. Uh, I love that option of dialogue. You know, the dialogue options and yeah, stuff like that. Options, yeah, yeah. It's less like Mass Effect in the way where it was like you you like do the the red one or the blue one. It's more yeah. like persuade. It's very like Kotor. It's like very old school. Like do this or this. Um, That's awesome. And with the stats you have, obviously, like if you have enough stats to persuade that individual, you can do it. Um, yeah, and even like the first mission is like. Uh, it just reminds like seriously knights of the old republic you have like this one city that tells you hey go hurt these other people you know these lesser people that left this city and you're like okay so in my head it's almost reminding me of the knights of the old republic where you're in the fancy city up on top right and there's the lower kind city of the rich the, up and top the, and, and the yeah and they're, and they're like kill these people off or you know don't worry about these people it's very just that kind of weird hmm. uh gray kind of uh i don't know thing it's really cool no it's kind awesome of, yeah the it's little bit awesome. of gray area to it and yeah but that sounds cool dev that makes <sighs> me even more excited because yeah. i've heard the yeah. comparisons to more of like a uh a, a bioware game of 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 your or whatever. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know like i Definitely. really want to experience that because honestly bioware isn't doing it anymore so i want to go i want i want to experience this and so yeah. i i might but bite the bullet and or not, I guess not even by the bullet, yeah. just play, <laughs> just on play the it on the PC yeah. and then maybe play again when this comes out. So the other question, uh, so about this, uh, I would have is do, do I think, it, so I was going to ask if you would think it would be ported, but I think it can be ported just a little bit. I have played. Um, it's not like visually blowing my mind. Like there's not okay. like physics really happening in the levels at all. Like n- none basically. So I think that will help a lot when porting it over the switch. It almost feels like the game wanted switch to be in the, in like the in the running of, yeah, yeah. of things it's going to do okay. just because the way it looks seems like it's an artistic choice to make it a little more cartoony ish. Um, hmm. So I feel like it can look, I feel like it will look pretty good on the switch. Well, like and- if, if Witcher three is running, I think this looks yeah worse than the witcher three and i think um yeah seriously when physics are out and stuff like that and the lighting like the lighting is fine like everything is okay like it's not an ugly game but it's not pretty it's not like i'm stunned like right. things like the draw distances aren't amazing like like yeah, the, so you the, think the, it would end up it could run oh, yeah. fairly well on the switch yes. then if it, so, you know with the yeah. right porting and everything yeah exactly so and the guys who did the porting of dark souls remastered yeah i think uh, they'll do fine. I mean, Dark Souls remastered isn't. I don't think, like, <laughs> if you can't part Dark Souls, that's kind of weird considering it was like a PlayStation Three. Sure, <laughs> sure. So yes. yeah. Well, and then the other thing too, like, so I I would have said like I'm skeptical, but yeah. I have been playing Witcher Three on Switch, and have yes, you? <laughs> yeah, and yes, it looks worse, but yes. it plays so well that I'm uh-huh. just like I just totally got. St- sucked into it and i'm yeah, like you awesome, know what dude. they can totally do this they can yeah. totally nail it and i'm glad and they honestly they came out and announced that it's coming to switch so they're confident that it can be yeah. ported to switch i think yeah. we'll see it soon i think so too i think it will be i don't know if it'll be that six month length that games radar is kind of basing it on because just because of the dark souls remastered is a weird comparison yeah it's kind of because they're same. different games it's like totally apple and oranges games. yeah yeah and different and different different console generations but like i said i don't think it's like blowing my mind visually so if, if you want to wait i think you, switch will be perfectly fine anyways that's no that. you've convinced me yeah. that i gotta play this you gotta try you finish. do get it yeah you do get it <laughs> you gotta give it a try uh, uh so mad pat cool. also asked with this when playing outer worlds this week i was reminded of how awesome obsidian is as a developer i love their work from fallout 76 to stick of truth xbox really scored by obtaining them as a first party developer which leads me to my question. Do you think Nintendo would ever think of entering the subscription space similar to Xbox 
Game Pass. I've been playing Outer Worlds on Game Pass, and I'm loving the experience. I feel with all of Nintendo's uh, exclusive IPs, no one could compete with Nintendo's Game Pass. Thoughts? Not going to happen. Yeah, not going to happen, Holmes. <laughs> uh, we can barely I would get, love it. Yeah, I would love it too. But we can barely get uh, Nintendo and SNES games. Or, yeah. you know, NES and SNES it, games. <laughs> it, I honestly, like, maybe, what, 20 years from now? But, like, yeah, I would love yeah. a Nintendo Game Pass type thing where yeah. they add stuff to their library games that you can just download. Yeah, definitely. With paying for a yeah. subscription. Like, I totally would do that. Uh, yeah. They won't because, first of all, they their titles, so the ones that, like, Nintendo publishes and makes mm-hmm. and all that stuff, they know they can sell for $60 a pop. Like, yep why they, would they yes and they and they can do it forever nintendo holds that money forever like when you when i was a kid waiting for nintendo games to go on sale never happened no when you were sitting at the GameStop, you were like come on man give me something on this thing but nothing black nothing friday really deals small. everything's yeah. discounted except for freaking nintendo stuff yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think they're getting better like they are, they are. they're realizing they are. that they can't compete with sony's games at like 20 bucks and stuff like that <laughs> but it's real like they're so they're going down to like 40s on occasion yeah. but they're never going to go lower than that like no. they just they make so much money and we're going to talk about their money soon so oh, believe me i love talking about nintendo N- money N- N- nintendo is this the new bitcoin their stuff yeah the big N. Money. they call it the big N. the big N. they got some uh, nintendo coins uh sweet I, yeah so it's it's uh <laughs> it's it's not gonna happen i wish nope. it would I wish I would. think you and I are both on board. We would totally subscribe, Dude, but it is not going to happen. Yes. Never. Like Nintendo's IP alone <laughs> would destroy yep. everybody. But guess what? That's why they're not going to do it. It's exactly. too good. Exactly. Yep. It's too good. All right, Trev. We're going to get controversial. Oh, we're going to get crazy. Are we getting into politics again? We're getting into politics again. Oh, we got the politics section. <laughs> burr, burr. It's a poli- tra- <laughs> politic train pulling in. Mm. Yep. It's giving you a healthy dose. Real good, y'all. Nah, just you, thought it was, you thought it was done. You thought it was done. No, nah, it ain't done yet. It's back. <laughs> it's back. So before we get into it, though, before we get into it, <laughs> we, got a, we, got, we got a question from Bismon. He asks, which uh with you got with your guys's reaction to blizzard hong kong debacle with your uh oh blah blah blah, blah, blah. <laughs> sorry with your guys's reaction to the blizzard hong kong debacle will you ever talk blizzard again especially in the light of blizzard's recent apology about the incident and the announcement of overwatch 2 coming to the switch or are you too in in this for the long run what could blizzard do to fix the situation in your mind so are we still Going out there with our picketing. Are we going against the Blizzard? Are we going to even talk about this on our podcast again? Blizzard, will they ever enter our midst on the Nintendo show? Trev, what do you think? They announced Diablo 4. (laughs) I got really excited. (laughs) I know, dude. Like, I, okay, so I got all like, I'm boycotting. I was like choking on my water. Sorry. (laughs) What? Uh, no. Uh, so like, I you was... had subscribed and then you subscribed again? No, I didn't know. I didn't subscribe again. But I did watch some of the Blizz uh, con stuff. And uh-huh. I, I do want to first say, because I was thinking that they would just be like, whatever, we're not even going to acknowledge the acknowledge situation. It. This is dumb. Yeah. We're just going to move forward and people are just going to deal with it. Yeah. I do like like their main dude. I wish I remembered his name, but he has long hair. Mr. Real, hair. Yep. Mr. Hair. Uh, <laughs> I do like that he got up and he's like, you know what? We made a mistake. We reacted too fast. We yeah. we don't want to infringe on people's you know basic rights and things like that. So, you yeah. know, like there was, I thought some really good stuff said. Now, yeah. Of course, it comes down to now let's watch them. Let's see if they will match what they say. Cause, yeah. But I do like that he said, he's like, you know, what? these words, and again, this isn't a quote, but he said something yeah. to the line of like, hey, these words won't be enough. Like you will see yeah. it in us going forward. Okay. And you know what? Blizzard has been so solid for years that I hope, yeah. I hope that they keep to their word. And yeah. they don't let China push them around, that they stick to what they have committed to being as, yeah. you know, a, a proliferal, you know, company. So, yeah, yeah. Well, so there it is, y'all. Are we just <laughs> selling out just like that? Um, no, I agree mostly. <laughs> I think the the problem is that they still, for me personally, 
I would like it if they got it to the point where um, Chung or what's his name, whatever. Yeah, his name Blitz was. Chung. Blitz Chung. Oh, uh, so quick we forget, Dev. Yeah, so quick we forget. Uh, if Blitz Chung. <laughs> Hashtag uh, never forget Blitz Chung. Never, never forget that sweet, sweet boy. Um, if he did, like, if they totally got the band hammer off that boy, like, he's like six, like, what is he like? He has his six months or whatever. It's a six month. He got all his money back. He got all of his money back. For me, I would think it would be cool personally if they just made it so he didn't have his six month thing. Like I agree. they they say, they want to show with actions, then show it with your actions. Like yep. if you really believe in your whole spiel about giving uh, free speech and all that crap, all that American idealism, if you believe in that crap. <laughs> Which isn't crap if you believe Whoa, in that stuff. Okay. That, if that, you believe in that goodness. stuff, yeah, I'm yelling. No, if you believe in that stuff, uh, then uh, let's let that guy, you know, come back, play his games. Yeah, bring Get him back on to the, the field. Fold. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> the digital fields. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I I I want to watch them forward. Hopefully that yeah. they are smarter with their decisions, and I hope yeah. that, dude. It sounds like with everybody bringing this up and making it such a big topic that they yeah. felt it like they, yeah. they have yeah. felt it as a company. And so I think that they'll think twice next time. I sure hope so. Oh, I hope so too. Yeah. But, so I, but, uh, I really they, do. I really do hope that they felt that. Listen, Trev, I know what you're going to say next. I, I understand. You want to talk about your Diablo four. Let's not forget. <laughs> but Devin. Trev, we forget so easily the culture Diab- nowadays. We Diablo forget. 4. <laughs> They've brainwashed us because <laughs> we're gamers and we want the newness. We want, we the, want the new shiny. We forget. We forget when the newness comes. I know. Never forget. Know. Never hashtag. Never forget. Blitz Unless chug. it's Diablo Four. Bl- Blitz chug. <laughs> Unless it's Diablo Four. <laughs> All right, let's talk okay. about Diablo Four. Right. Trev, no, just go on to Diablo dude, Four. Okay, real quick. I am yeah, so dude. excited about this game. I sure just watching the video. I was just giddy. I was smiling. Yeah. I was on my break at lunch watching it, and I just I I, I let out a little squeal because I was so excited. <laughs> like I love for good Diablo. I'm excited that it's coming back. I maybe we'll get a Switch port. Hey, there we go. Now we're a Nintendo topic. Yep, we um, did it. Yeah, we did it. But I hope it's great. But no, yeah. in all in all honestly, like I hope Nintendo or Blizzard steps up is a little bit better with their choices yeah. that they make. So No, I yeah, it looks cool. Uh I didn't see so much on Diablo 4, but what's uh I I know one game that is coming to the Switch is Overwatch 2. So let's talk about that. IGN right. reports that Overwatch 2 will exist in a shared multiplayer ecosystem with Overwatch 1 allowing for players of both games to play on the same maps and with same heroes, cosmetics will also carry forward to Overwatch 2. The sequel will introduce new maps and characters like Toronto and Sojourn, uh, <laughs> respectfully, while also introducing new PvP competitive mode push and a new story-centric gameplay. So, did you look at any of this kind of stuff? At all? A little bit. Honestly, I got yeah. stuck on the Diablo stuff. And yeah. so I really like Overwatch. I'm not... Yeah ultra good at it and so like i don't know like i this is cool like it's exciting yeah announce that diablo 4 is coming (laughs) okay i'm sorry i'm off my diablo stuff okay go ahead dev what are your thoughts no you're good as far as like what i saw uh i think it's cool like so what's hold on man ban asks this with overwatch 2 coming to the switch are you all at all impressed with the sequel or are you like me and thinking that this could have just been a massive update for the original overwatch uh from what i saw i I could i could see you making a case for you know this being an update like a giant update for overwatch i think the reason why it's not a giant update for overwatch is because they need money just like destiny 2 like destiny and destiny 2 uh, I know I'm probably going to piss off some Def- Destiny fans or whatever, but homies, the graphical jump there, not huge. Uh, the worlds there, uh, they look very similar. Some of them are <laughs> literally similar, like right. the moon. Right. Um, so, you know, I, I understand, like, for them, they need to make a sequel because they're probably losing their player base by now. Sure. Like, it's a five-year-old game, or at least a four-year-old game, and it's... Uh, They've done 31 characters. They've been through all this stuff and they're not going to get more people by doing some random DL, like more DLC for this game. 
Well, and you they're know, not going to do gonna paid happen. DLC because then it splits like player base and causes yeah. a bunch of weird stuff. It, it honestly, it's been enough time. Yeah, Overwatch two. I'm fine with it coming. Like, why not? No, yeah, I am too. And I think to be honest, I really love Overwatch. I am actually decent at it, at least with some of the what? characters. And I've had like I really enjoy the game. And um, and I'm excited that this one's actually being released for the Switch like right away rather than now with yeah, Overwatch like being one, delayed so far being delayed yeah and ported randomly. And Do you think that will make it very well uh, cross play like the, like the new Call of Duty mm. that just came out is? Um uh, yeah I would think so. It seems like they're doing that to me. That would be like cool seemed, as yeah, opposed to have them siloed off into their own separate like consoles, but yeah, have it, it so where like, everybody can just play together. I think would be yeah. Cool. I think Nintendo does well with that, I think. And I think PlayStation now is on board. So I think kind of all that cross. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think cross play is going to happen. And to be honest, uh, I from what I saw, I think the story centric thing, that's kind of cool. That'll be fun to do some story yes. modes. People are saying it's similar to Destiny or whatever. That's with what the I'm char- excited about. Yeah. With the characters they have and like the world they create, like in the and they do great like little movies and yes, stuff. If you do. guys haven't they seen so these, good. they're amazing. Yeah. So that's cool. That's when I was thinking about Overwatch 2. I was like, I would like to see these characters in something like well, more than like pushing a stupid uh, metal <laughs> platform down. And you're like, this is saving the world. How? Like, I yeah, don't understand no, that. Like, it does not compute. I so. agree. Well, and then also like you remember like the origins of Overwatch, right? Like it came from yeah. uh, it was codenamed Titan and it was supposed to be blizzard's new first person shooter mmo you know to yeah. kind of almost replace yep. wow and uh-huh. then they kind of scrap that project and turn it into overwatch so yeah. i think like there's a foundation and a lore and all this other cool base that could be so cool to have like a co-op game like a destiny yeah. where it is like you guys working together against like you know you know the enemy or whatever it is yeah yeah so exactly i'm excited to explore that because i i love pvp player versus player mm-hmm. stuff but yeah i man i love co-op i love playing oh, with man. people yeah. and being cooperative so yeah yeah i feel yeah and the rest really the rest like visuals i'm like i think they had like a like uh what are they like a show or an event or something saying Oh, and this hall, we're going to show you the difference of the visuals of the first one and the second one. Yeah. Anytime that you have to do a whole event or show to say this game looks better than the other one, that means that your visuals haven't really changed that much. Right. Which is fine with <laughs> Overwatch because the graphics are just like Link's, like um, Breath, not Breath, of, well, yeah, like Breath of the Wild or Wind Waker are games that look good because they're artistically that. They are just, right. they are artistically right. But this, <laughs> like this one, it's like, uh, I guess it's better. It looks a little cleaner. I don't know. Honestly, the cartoony look, I I love yeah. like of Overwatch. I love the so look. Yeah, it's not going to change blast. for me. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, visual, I understand. I get it. I understand people having that uh, timidness. But like you're, if you're an Overwatch player, you're going to get into Overwatch 2 automatically. Like those yep. worlds are combined new maps new characters so all the I stuff like that they're moving all this stuff yeah. like your your customization yeah. like your skins your different yep. emotes yep. or whatever to the second one yeah. i think is cool exactly. as well so i think it's gonna be good and dude nice. yeah diablo fart i don't know much about it trev i i know I've, I've i have diablo 3 but i haven't played it my friends are obsessed with it oh, i just Devin. haven't played much of it Devin, let's play Dude, I think I need, yeah, I need some Diablo like experience because I played a little bit and I'm like, yeah, this game's super good. Like, I just haven't really gone for it, you know, gone for the yep. gusto. Oh, but dude. Diablo we're, Four, we're I, from what I see, it's a little, it's a little darker and a little more yeah. gloomy the way people want it to be. A little yeah, spookier a little more or whatever. Gritty. Yeah, a no, little more be fun. De- a little more devil in your Diablo. Well, hey, yeah. Ex- Oof. Whoa, is that what Diablo means? I think it might. No, I'm just is kidding. It Spanish or something. <laughs> I think it's so French. French. Yeah, no, just kidding. We're good. <laughs> so yeah, uh, so look into that. I, I assume. Well, I don't know. We'll see if some reason Diablo. I think might not run on the Switch, but we'll see. I don't it think depends. it will. I yeah, I'm skeptical, but we will see. Maybe on the Switch Two or the Switch Pro. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Diablo Three did good on the Switch, but that's like a how old is that game? Like, that game came out in like 2012. Eight. Okay, I think. so it's pretty old. 
yeah. seven years? I don't know. I can't do That's, math, guys. Yeah. Sorry. No, but we're going to do cool. some math. We're going to do some math right now. Uh, oh, Nintendo <laughs> Switch earning report. Exciting, everyone. You like numbers? You're going to. Oh, dude, uh, <laughs> I love earning reports. I don't know why, because I'm like, I, do too. I don't I'm a nerd. own any stock in Nintendo, <laughs> but cool. Let's find out what's going on here. I know. I'm such a loser. I'm like, why do I care about this crap? Oh, but my I systems, do. My system's doing so well. It's it's, okay. it's the inner fanboy, Dev. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, what dude. it is. <laughs> I mean, we have a podcast. There's a problem here. It's um, true. Nintendo Life Reports. Maybe an addiction, would you say? <laughs> Maybe. No, I'm just oh, kidding. Maybe they're right. <laughs> maybe it is a disorder. <laughs> uh, Nintendo Life reports as of 30th of September 2019, Nintendo Switch family of systems have sold 41.67 million units worldwide. Dude. The number includes sales. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty That's good. A lot. Okay. Yeah. The number includes sales from both the original model and the new Nintendo Switch Lite. The news comes from Nintendo's six-month earning release, which has been shared online today. The last official hardware sales total had been re uh, received before this was back in June, by which point the Switch had sold 36.87 million units. Uh, the report also gives us our first look at sales for the Nintendo Switch Lite, also as of the 30th of September, the Switch Lite shifted 1.95 million units. Not bad total considering it was only released 10 days prior. Holy moly, dude. That's Within like 2 10 million days in selling 10, 10 days. million. The original yeah. Switch, I think in the first 30 days, it was only like 2 point something million. I, I think you're right. Dude, no, yeah, you're right. It is. And yeah. to see that, like, it's almost on point That's pretty impressive if not yeah. better than when the original switch was launching like yeah. obviously the switch is doing well and that switch light was a really good idea yeah i wonder if the switch light cells are um japan mostly i wonder i wonder how cool much know, of that like, yeah how wise, much of like, that is the japan audience because i could or see the japanese audience chunk. Yeah, yeah, a good chunks. They that. prefer mobile. They prefer handheld, and uh, you know, home consoles aren't as popular as they are here yeah. in the states. So yeah, uh, I can see a big chunk. Yeah. But also, I think here, I think there's good group yeah. of people. I, I was one of. I was. I was one. I bought it, Trev. Hey, I Devin. bought that thing. I bought this. Hey, Devin, thing. did you do it too? We got two of them. Yeah, the boy. That yeah, boy, <laughs> you know, hey, you remember a couple podcasts ago when we were both yeah. like, we're dude, not going to get this. Yeah, this we're never going to buy this stupid oh, system. Dude. Every yeah. day after that conversation, all I could think about was buying that stupid system. Dude, I was like, awesome. I cannot stop. And I was like, how can I buy this? How can like, I how get can this I, stupid gotta system? Got to figure this out. Yeah, I was like, Worth what am I selling? Okay, what am I quick. grabbing? I want Devin's <laughs> five, five second Switch five Lite second review. review. Okay. Uh, I think that the triggers are better than the original Switch. Yes. I know no one has talked about the triggers. Everybody, the triggers are better on that Switch Lite. I they have hear. a little bit of a curve on them that holds your finger a little nicer. Uh, they have a different click. All the buttons are a little softer, so yeah, it's perfect for nighttime clickety play. They're clickety-clackety. Yes, it's perfect for nighttime play. But they feel play, good. So. Yes, exactly. Here, so do you want it here? I'm holding it up right now. You don't, feel, you don't hear that clack? No, it's nothing like the stupid, the other ones, which are really clicky, which I understand some people might like the clicky buttons, but this is perfect for like, if you're with someone in the bed next to you and you're like, I gotta be quiet. Or you have a baby in yes. next to you, dude, this is the one, this is the one. And it is, the size is a lot nicer. I have, I have a, a satisfied gaming grip for my old switch oh, and I had to so get, good. I had to get that because I felt like it was really hard to grip the switch by itself. It was yep. in a weird spot. Like you couldn't, um, usually your fingers, when you're holding a controller, your bottom two fingers, the pinky and the, whatever the ring finger kind of has to like, uh, kind of prop kinda, it, hold it. Yeah. Kind of, it helps to prop it on the light, but you didn't have those fingers to prop it on the bigger switch. Exactly. So on this one, you got them to prop, which is nice. So you can hold it nicely. It just, it is the perfect size. The screen is, you know, nice. Like the battery life for me is really mm -hmm. good, but I, I've heard from like some test, it's only like 30 minutes better, but to hey, be honest, take it. I have a switch that's two years old. And for me, I think it's a lot longer. Like I'm yes. playing games for hours and I'm like, this is not dead yet. And I'm still well, playing. And I feel so. like I can play like, I don't know. I like it more because it's, hey, it's lighter, which is so yeah. cool. And it, it is like, it's yeah. going to sound silly. But like, the, if you look at the numbers, the weight difference isn't like 
crazy Nothing. but like yeah. when you're holding it in your hands and gaming and holding it up mm-hmm. like the original switch i would get this weird carpal tunnel like pain yeah. in my arm and in my <laughs> elbow and crap like that yeah just because like it was it's a heavier it's a heftier device so yeah. like the switch light i love how lightweight it is i love yeah. the fill the plastic i love the freaking d-pad Yes. I also love that it's just one slab because it genuinely feels more sturdy. Where does, like yeah. an older switch, the Joy Cons start to wiggle a little bit. You're not mm-hmm. getting that. Oh, I just, dude, I'm I'm in yeah. love with it. Yeah, and I, yeah, just everything feels a little bit more precise. Everything feels exactly yeah. where it should be. It is just if you are a handheld only person, this is the only system you should get if you're getting a Nintendo yeah. Switch. Oh, if dude. you play with other people. Get the normal switch. It's like the perfect you, sequel to the Vita. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you are a Vita fan or a holdout, like, and you're like, I'm not ever going to buy that because it's too big or too clunky or whatever. Guys, this is the one. This is the guy to go into and grab. It is It's just slick. It feels nice. It's light. It is perfect for handheld play. And it's, it's honestly, I've never, I just don't even play my switch that much anymore unless no. people are coming over or I and just want to play multiplayer it. games like that. Kay. Yeah. That's the only so. issue with the light. I wish the light was still dockable. Yeah. Like, cause then it would yeah. honestly be the perfect machine. Perfect like switch. I really yeah. wish, cause then I would get rid of my other one. Um, yeah. but yeah. the fact that you can't dock it, I think is the real, it bummer. is weird. So yeah, kind know, of really hey, weird. I'm going to live the two switch, uh, switch life, yep. you know? Yep. Yep. I, yeah, I don't know if I would say it's go out there and buy it if you own a switch already, <laughs> unless you stupid. have a gaming addic- addiction like me and Trev. But other than that, <laughs> I think really, to be honest, it is, I, I enjoy the purchase. I really like the system. I think it is probably one of the best, it might be the best Nintendo handheld I've ever played. Yeah. I think it is. It's, yeah. it's beautiful. Oh, dude, so, what color did you get real quick? Uh, gray. I, hey, I don't have, hey, yeah, I don't have, I don't have any, I don't have any color. Like I, my old switch, I got the colored ones, like the blue uh-huh. and the reds and all that stuff. And I was like, I need some gray in my life. Yeah, I kind of want, I want, I need a little adulthood in my life. So I went for it. <laughs> uh, talking of, let's go a little bit more on the software sales. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah oh yeah. Sorry. We got <laughs> sidetracked. So, uh, so where this sits is basically right in the middle. So you got the Wii U at 13.56 million, the GameCube at 21.74, Nintendo 64 at 32.93, and the Nintendo Switch at 41.67. We are now going up on the SNES, which is insane. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I can't believe that. How does the SNES sell less than the NES? That's crazy. It okay. Just was, I guess. That's weird. I, that's weird. Yeah. So and SNES is 49.1. So I feel like we might... I, like if the Switch Lite sells really good this holiday season and the Switch, which I think it will, it we will. might pass this uh, by the end of the year. I think Dude, we might so cool. get into the fives, uh, their fifties. Uh, NES sixty one point nine. I and then the Wii is one hundred one, which is just up there again. Remember uh, one hundred one million. Like what yeah, one hundred and one million. Yeah. Uh, PlayStation Four beat it strangely just recently yeah. which is yeah. insane to me but i think it's selling like freaking hotcakes man it's a good system it's a good system it uh really is. software sells this is insane everyone mario kart 8 is number one deluxe this is a wii u port and has 19 million copies sold dude so one why are you buying two this switches? again <laughs> yes. one in two switch owners have that game like that yeah. is insane I don't, that just boggles my mind. That game is, <laughs> Nintendo it's does not, it's it's so old. It is but so it's old. But it's, it's, it's good. It's good. It is good. It is good. But like, it's just amazing to me how like that's, like a port is doing that well. Yeah, um, exactly. Su- Super Smash Brothers Ultimate is second, 15.71. Super Mario, Mario Odyssey. <laughs> Mario? <laughs> Mario, fifteen point three eight. So Mario Odyssey is not too far behind, but I think no kidding. Uh, Smash is gonna you know keep going. It's gonna keep selling. Odyssey yeah, doesn't. And then Leg- Breath of the Wild fourteen point five. Uh, Pokemon Let's Go eleven point two eight. Breath of the Wild that's really good for a Zelda, by the way. It Splatoon really two is. nine. Uh, 0.28 Super Mario Party 7.59 uh, Deluxe uh, Wii U another Wii U port an 8 4.59 million uh, Mario Maker at a 3.93 which is weird that it's not uh, right. a little higher to me and yeah. Link's Awakening uh, came out 10 days also like right when that you know thing came out yep. uh, the light 
and it's got 3 million. So in 10 days, they sold 3 million copies of Link's Awakening. So <laughs> Zelda's crazy. doing great. That's awesome. Dude, for reals. That's, yeah. that's awesome. Congratulations, so, Nintendo. Good job, guys. Good job taking so, all our money. <laughs> seriously. So Meg Egg asks, with Nintendo, Nintendo's recent uh, financial report, do you expect that Nintendo will outsell Nintendo's other consoles or will Nintendo never beat out the Wii? Um, Dude, I feel I, like the Wii was just like a freak show. Yeah, I, I like not like a freak shit. Just like just since it was so weird, it sold so many. And I, I know it, I think it's going to be hard to reach that. But the fact that they're already almost halfway there in just a couple of years, I don't yeah. know. They just might. Yeah, I think I, I like I really do think I don't know if it'll beat the we in my head, but they they will be. I think this will be the second best selling home console for Nintendo. Yeah. Agreed. I think it's definitely going to be. I mean, we know by the end of the year, at least in my opinion, they will beat the S- SNES. Uh, NES is not that far after that. You know, if you have a couple more hits out of this baby, which it yeah. will, uh, that will be easy to pass. And then in, the Wii is just such. It's a forty million gap. So, I, in my opinion, I feel in my heart. I just feel it in my bones, Trev. <laughs> okay. Just I'm sent. I'm, I'm sending it out to the universe. Universe. 80, 80 million. 80 okay. million is coming to me. Hey, That's what I'm mark, guessing. You mark this day down in history. Mark it we'll down, everyone. Back. 80 um, million is my Switch sell, yes. Well, think about, about it this way. Trip? So you yes, know how the thing. PS4 uh, outsold the Wii? Yeah. It's because, like, I think this is why. So first of all, it's a fantastic console, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. They sold, and then they had that half-step uh, upgrade, that Pro. So the yeah. PS4, then the PS4 Pro. So you had a lot of people that bought a PlayStation and then came again and bought a Pro. I think yeah. something similar. Like I think that's what made it sell so well. Mm-hmm. So I it wonder if the Switch ever releases the Switch Pro, if it would get that extra juice. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, so, and I think yeah, and the Switch. Well, Nintendo no, it loves the iterations, and I feel like they've all. I mean, they've already iterated once. There yeah. will, I think, be a next a second iteration. And that will probably be it for the Switch as far or sure. until maybe the Switch 2. But yeah, I do think another iteration would help even push more gamers maybe into this space. But I I don't know what will kick it. In my opinion, I don't know what's going to kick it past the PlayStation nah, or I into won't. the Wii. I think it'll sell, I'm going to say 90. Yeah, yeah 90 that's, million. that's pretty good. I like it. Because I think the Switch isn't, it's not getting the people like the Wii did. It's not getting that weird grandma and grandpa audience, but it's not like it's also and it's it's getting more gamers maybe than a, the old like the Wii U and stuff like that. It's getting that yeah. you know, like people that love the PC gaming and stuff. They're getting the, those that audience a little more, but they're not getting all the gamers. They're not like the PlayStation does. Sure. Like PlayStation's sure. like we got the gamers like they took all of Xbox's people, you know, they grabbed all the money on that bad boy. So, right. and that was just good marketing and good, yeah. And like you said, iterations and all that stuff too. And I, and I think, uh, Nintendo will be passing Xbox one, uh, maybe already has, I think Xbox one oh, is rumored you. to be at 41 million right now. So oh, poor Xbox. there it is. Sorry, Xbox. There it is. <laughs> you were so high on the list. No, and 40 is good too, Xbox. It You're is. doing all right. Really You're is. doing okay. In there. Anyways, that is it. The news, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Miyamoto. Thank you, sir. Thank you. From on high. It's okay. Anytime. <laughs> Why does Miyamoto sound like Mario? Is he Mario? Dude, that's weird. Miyamoto, no, get, get out of here. And get what out. What are you doing? Here. God, you little weirdo. Oh, why is he hanging out in my room with me? <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I won't let him talk uh, again. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> bye. <laughs> You're creeping me out, Trev. <laughs> We're going in to who did it better. That's what we're doing. All right. It's time to see who is the best of something. This time it's games, two amazing games, similar genre. We're going to declare who is the best of these two games. Mario Brothers 3 versus Mario Brothers World. All right, Trev. Three or World? 
this is this is highly con you know high tensions dude on is this, this one. even a this isn't even a question oh is it not is no it not, dude like sir. this isn't even a is fight not, this is sir i i don't think this is confrontational at all it's clearly mario bros 3 i don't know what the issue uh, is move on well, case shut well, Devin. i don't need to hear your opinion let's go <laughs> why Fan questions all right no i'm just kidding <laughs> Come on, make your case. Three right. better than world. I don't Can know, you, dude. Okay, convince right. me. Convince, oh, dude. So there's like this thing called like a k- tanuki. Okay, tanuki that's Mario. Good. Yeah, that's dude. He good. has a freaking raccoon. Yeah. T- First of all, the other day I did a bunch of research on what a freaking tanuki is. Did you know yeah. that this is? It's, really- it's like a. It's like a dog raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> and they're in Japan. They're not raccoons. So I always thought he was huh. Raccoon Mario, but no, but he's, he's a, Tanuki. He is a Tanuki. He's okay. this weird little like fox dog raccoon thing. That's oh, and anyways, that like there's a bunch of Tanuki statues in Japan. Uh-huh. And did you know that they all have these like giant like balls? I know it's gonna sound crazy. <laughs> all the statues. Look it up. Google it. Put safe search. Giant off. balls. Yeah, dude. Like it's literal weird balls. Thing. <laughs> yeah, it's something about like they put like in the folklore, Tanuki's uh-huh. like store gold bars and stuff in their in their sacks. In their junk. <laughs> yeah, dude. Anyways, weird tangent. So that's why this wins. So this this one's better because Mario has bigger balls. Listen, I understand. <laughs> I understand what you're trying to say. You no, know. okay. But let right, me tell out. you what. But the let gameplay me tell is you, fantastic. Me, okay, that's great, Trev. Guess what? You know what else has good gameplay? I know Mario, Mario World. World. It's actually it the same really gameplay of all, except I would do you one better. It's visually prettier than three. Mm. Like it looks nicer. It looks sweet. Listen, we don't have the two nuki. We have that stupid cape. I understand. It's not as good. It's not as good. But it, it, it it's got it's got a nice world map. We got a little Yoshi's. It's cute. Does it's, it okay? Does it uh, have a, a mean son that tries to swing down and hit you when you're running okay. through the desert? Okay, you trash. Okay, you understand. <laughs> you know what? You're right. You might be right. Okay. Oh my gosh! No, I know. I are both I really, okay. Listen. Wait, wait, wait. Yep. Yep. Does it have a cool little hammer that you can use on like rocks hidden throughout the level to okay. go to different secret paths? Probably not. Yeah. No, but it does have secret paths. You're right. It does have secret paths. They're both secrets, but I think three might have better secrets, to be honest. And it has items. You freaking like, dude, I think my favorite thing is going to the little mushroom houses and then Uh you get to pick one of the treasure chests and then you get an item and you could save that item for later, dude. You're like, I'm going to hold that. I'm going to save that for this the opportune moment that's weak Dude, there is a frog suit it's the the week there is a frog the weak, suit the week use that i the items you know oh the gosh. week need the items scrubs the back in the day when we played the original mario we didn't need items we just yeah. went out and we died several times over and over again. you know what people you know? that say that they <laughs> say that because they're the losers and, and they <laughs> <laughs> no, to dude. be honest, I'm gonna be honest. I actually like three, but more than World. It's I was so good. I was with World Train like my whole life. I just mm-hmm. remember honestly enjoying World better. I remember World's art style as being the Mario art style to beat, and I still yeah. think it might be. But like when I play three on Mario Maker two, I think three is better. I like the way it feels better. I think uh, artistically, something about its oldness actually yeah. really, I really it, enjoy it in some ways. Awesome. I don't know why. It is cool. And I, I and this is going to be, it's going to be a fan question soon. It's about the IGN top 10 li- or top 100 list. Oh. And they, and they got rid of three and they did world. <gasps> yep. As oh. number one. I mean, Spoilers. like, hey, to each their own, because like, genu- I'm with yeah. you, like World was, I think as a kid, I probably would have said World was my favorite. But as I've gotten older, and I've matured, and I, you know, refined my tastes, you know? Yeah. Uh, no, I going back to it, like, I really love playing three over World. Like, I yeah. have so much fun. The only thing that I really love about World is I freaking love Yoshi, dude. dude. Like, yeah. I love me some Yoshi. So I think that's something that was amazing that came from World. But yeah, three. Yeah, is I mean, it, it is it is hard to beat Yosh. Like that's a character that's yeah, Blank. pretty endearing. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I just there's something about three that I I really do enjoy. So we're gonna give it to three. We're gonna give it to three.
that's that's that we did that one <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to sure end these segments, it. you know? It's cool. Uh, fan questions. Let's get into some fan questions. Peeing Demon asked, <laughs> IGN recently <laughs> revised uh, their top 100 video games of all time list. The updated list has caused some outrage among gamers. Do you think this outrage is warranted? Do you agree with the updated list? If not, what would you change? P.S. I realize that revising a top 100 list would take forever. So maybe just focus on the top 10. So here are the top 10, Trev. Okay. Number 10, Super Mario 64. Number oh. nine, Red Dead Redemption. Num- uh, number eight, Half-Life 2. Number seven is Tetris. Number six, Super Mario Brothers 3. Number five, Breath of the Wild. Metroid Prime is number four. Super Metroid. Oh, okay. not, Metroid Pro- okay. not Metroid Prime. Sorry. Super Metroid is Super number four. Metroid. Okay. Portal 2 is number three. Uh, number t- two is Link to the Past. And number one is Super Mario World. A lot of these games are Nintendo games. So this is yeah, up in our isn't... wheelhouse. Uh, <laughs> what are you thinking of that Dude, list, man? So like, first of all, no, I'm not outraged. Like this no, is, this is so someone's angry. opinion. Yeah. yeah. Like, hey, IGN, this is their opinion. I That's yeah. awesome. It's not yeah. my list. And so no. I'm not outraged. I think it's funny when people <laughs> no. get upset about something. Yeah. How dare you? Where was my, <laughs> I don't know. There's like thousands of games, Barbie guys. game or whatever. Yeah, there's like, thousands of games. They're not going to get your top 10. I'm sorry. No. And it's you just know what? Gonna it's their opinion. Everybody has their own yeah. opinion. That's cool. That's what Dude. makes this world go around. But yep. I would say... But they're, they're wrong. Just kidding. They're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pissed. <laughs> uh, no, that like, being said... No, that kidding. being said, no, I think it's cool. Like, I think, honestly, that is a solid list. Like, if you were to like... Yeah go back to someone in time like back in time and bring a bunch of game yeah. consoles with like only these games i think yep. that would be so cool to show them like these are the best games that you'll ever experience in yeah. the future yeah they're good yeah they're super good i like if i was going to change anything i don't know like maybe there's too, there is too much mario on here we got three mario games on the top 10 we got 64 3 and world yeah it's kind of going to his head isn't it like I understand, Mario, you're great. You got amazing games. All of those probably do deserve to be in the top ten. But for me, on a top ten, I like to see variety. <laughs> yeah, so I understand yeah. being pissed off that oh, three of these games are just different versions of a Mario game, which is fine. <laughs> yeah. Like I think you could stick with Mario sixty four, so it's a different Mario game, and maybe do you know a, a pick three or world. Like just pick yeah, one, just and pick maybe one. in the notes say um, three is better because of blah. Uh, <laughs> The other one, Links to the Past, yeah, and there's two Zelda games on the list, yeah, which is crazy. A, it's crazy. And Breath of the Wild being above Ocarina is it's uh, it stings my heart still, but okay. <laughs> I don't like Breath of the Wild is really good, but some reason my nostalgia bones are like uh, uh, Ocarina. Um, right? Yeah, Your I don't know. If, do you feel the same? Do you feel the no, same about that one? No, like, you, you think that one's holds better. A, a spot in my heart that I will always love, and some memories and stuff like that. But like, yeah. if I'm gonna go play a game today, yeah, that's true. It's like Breath of the Wild's so fun. Like yeah. I, I can't. I go back to almost like. I don't know I go back to it frequently with Ocarina, yeah. but hey, the new new game's new, man. Like they yeah. obviously have done a lot to it, and I have more fun with it. I'm impressed that it's at five. That's pretty good. Like yeah. they that they have that game. Like that's pretty br- brave to be like a game from 2017 is five. Mm-hmm. So there you go. I was uh, disappointed Portal. there weren't any Pokemans. Yeah, no Pokemans. Not on this one. Dude, uh, that game po- sells like freaking hotcakes. Sorry, I keep cutting you off. <laughs> You're fine, dude. And then. Uh, no- portal 2 was three do you like portal games i uh, yeah, dude portal's so good dude portal 2 is the shiz i love that game it is but, okay but like also with I portal, like three. no spoilers obviously it's an old yeah. game but yeah like you think it's just a puzzle game and i remember no. like oh these yeah. are neat little puzzles and then stuff <laughs> starts happening and you're like oh my gosh there's way more it's to this it's so like good. there's story and oh my gosh yeah. it's so cool it's so, so yeah good. i remember that being a moment where i beat that game all in one sitting i was sitting up in the computer room in, in my family's house and i was playing it just thinking i'd go through a couple levels and go to bed and i ended up like staying up all night i missed school the next day just because yeah. dude i love games like that that like catch you yeah. off guard and i feel like nowadays yes. with the internet and things like that we don't get to experience that as much because no. stuff yeah. gets spoiled for us but like yeah. we i man i love that i i yeah. love that game so much so i'm glad that it's on there 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, a confused one for me is Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, like I understand. It's really like I loved that game when it came out and I would have put it on my top 10 back then. But I think Red Dead Redemption 2 is way better. And I don't understand why Red Dead Redemption, like I played that game again recently. I'm like, dude, this is just like Grand Theft Auto 4. Like it just doesn't, yeah. it doesn't control well and it doesn't. Like, and like the story is nowhere near in the ballpark of Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> like, nowhere near. Like, right, right. Not even close. Like, it's so trivial compared to that game. Like, there's not much stake to it. I used to think it was one of the best storytelling games. Uh, not anymore. Like, there's so m- <laughs> there are games that outdo this game by far. I would even say people would probably be like, where's Grand Theft Auto? Why five sure. on this compared right. to this one? Anyways, Agreed. Half Life 2 is amazing. Of yep. course, in my head, that's, of course, there. Tetris, you can't really, you're not nah, going to shove Tetris dude, away. Tetris deserves to be there. Freak, that so game good. should be probably be number one. That game's amazing. Right. And uh, Super Metroid, which is, hey, I mean, I'm a uh, there's, a whole genre, there's a whole genre based off that whole game. So, yeah. yeah. Honestly, one I of my favorite okay. genres of games have came yeah. come out of that game. So I'm like, yep. yes, I, they, they deserve yeah. to be there. I like it. Definitely. So. Listen, cool your jets, ping demon. Cool your jets. <laughs> Keep your Mario balls hanging. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Super, Hang Master- them low. <laughs> Super Master 64 asks, which Mario game, including spinoffs and one-offs, is your personal favorite? Oh, shoot. Uh, Mario games, including spinoffs? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mario 3. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was going to say Mario Super Mario uh, 3. Hold on. Uh, galaxy oh, it's either galaxy, galaxy or 64 you're right I'm, you're right i'm a Those 3d really i'm a 3d guy okay uh, i respect that's that, that one po 15 asks with the release of overwatch on the switch i wonder if games that are entirely online focused are less intriguing to you on the switch i find these type of games less enticing because they don't take advantage advantage of the switch's portable feature and i find myself just playing them on the xbox and playstation instead what do you think yes yeah definitely dude <laughs> Uh, yeah, if like, you're gonna play an online game, you probably want to play an online game on a on a yeah, system that has good home. online. Play it, <laughs> yeah, yeah like play it if, at home it, on something with better fidelity. Like, yeah, dude, if you're online and you have other systems, you shouldn't be playing it on the Switch because, yeah, it miss like there's what are you gonna do? Play Overwatch where where your yeah. your public library? Well, it's like <laughs> your McDonald's. At the, at the Burger King, at the BK Lounge. Get the Wi-Fi at the BK Lounge. Yeah, which yeah. is going to be real good. You know that. Yeah, um, exactly. You know, I no. I don't think so. Like, go mm. with a console that's at home. Uh, yep. Like, it's not It great looks on better. Yeah. Yeah, it looks better. And you will, and most likely your friends are on those other online systems. And it, I mean, if they're not, then I, and if you all, all you have is the Nintendo, then obviously you do what you got to. But if you have other hey. systems and it's an online only game, I think this is the case where it switches for me. Like as far as like single player games, I'd actually rather play them on the switch with less fidelity. Correct. But if it's online, it's the reverse. So, yep. There you go, guys. Cool. Fan questions done. We did Thank it. Thank you for them questions. Thank you. Good. You guys are beauties. Beauties. All you ladies and gents. Is this time so we missed a few uh this gaia for complete edition is coming out resident evil 5 and 6 also came out super monkey ball banana blitz which is apparently not a great super monkey ball game also came out disney classics game aladdin the lion king i'm Woo. excited about this one yeah and, dude this is a uh, alley right there will purchase um <laughs> definitely <laughs> grab that one luigi's mansion 3 came out uh, i talked about it in the last podcast uh 86 go it check that good. bad boy out it looks, it looks so good. good i wanted to give it yeah i definitely want to give it a go that's my next game to purchase for sure nice uh, november 5th we got mario and sonic at the olympic games tokyo 2020 mm. um 
<coughs> oh, I'm dying. That one actually looks good. It does. As far as far as Mario and Sonic of the Olympic Games go, that would actually interest me. But we'll see. We'll see what the reviews say. November 8th, we got new Super Lucky Tale, which is an Xbox uh, game as well. So thank yeah. you, Xbox. A lot of uh, Microsoft stuff coming over. It's cool. <coughs> yeah, it is way cool. And then uh, Layton's Mystery Journey. If you're into the Layton games, uh, they're coming on over. They're coming on over from the 3DS, which means the 3DS is dead. Farewell. Pour a drink out for the sweet, sweet. <laughs> uh, All right. So what's, what's our new game of choice <laughs> then? What would you say if you were to say, hey, go pick one of these? Uh, I'm going to say Luigi's Mansion 3 for sure. Yes. Uh, I hear Disgaea is really good. I hear there's fans of that game for sure. And dude, go get that Aladdin the Lion King. I've, I hear it's actually a good port. So 20 bucks and you get 20- two amazing platformers yeah like yeah they're so good and they're hard like and they're I, hard. there's dude yeah. the freaking like lion king one where you're like swinging on giraffes and jumping on like zebras and crap is so yeah. hard but it is so like insane. the platform is so rewarding once you get to yeah. get past that so yeah, yeah i think it's totally it. worth it yeah definitely go give it a try i'm i'm so excited that those games come out those are the disney games that i remember most and that's like yeah i'm so excited so, so grab those games those are our recommendations recommendations let's end this bad boy with our own final recommendations it has to be it doesn't have to be video games at all it can be random stuff it could be anything that you want to talk about trev what is your recommendation this week dude my recommendation this is going to get a little personal okay i want everybody to come in real close come in real close we're going to gather in a circle we're going to talk about this let's do this Devin. i had an addiction hi trev and i had to seek help you sure did. It's preach, preach. Hallelujah. No, it, like I do. So for years, I have drank energy drinks like all the time. It was like the thing that kept me like I had to have one every day, if not a couple a day. It was bad. It was yeah. bad for like eight years long, ever since I had my children. Hmm. Wait a yeah. minute. <laughs> Wait, you're, you're so, what you, do you, you don't say? get sleep when you have a kid? I don't know. <laughs> uh, you might be experiencing that right now, Dev. Yeah, but I'm sorry, my addictions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was super into them. Anyways, it got to yeah. the point where like I was so reliant that if I missed a day, I would be so cranky and I would like just you. I feel like get headaches and stuff like that. I have stopped drinking energy drinks. I'm at almost the week mark now. And nice. dude, I'm finally coming out of because, dude, I got like sick from yeah. stopping energy drinks. My body just is like, what the freak is going on? My body's starting to come out of it, and I'm starting to feel just the same as if when I was drinking them. Uh And then in the future, if I choose to drink one because it's a crazy day or whatever, it'll actually work. Uh, Because, dude, I could drink an energy drink and go to sleep right after. So this is my public service (laughs) announcement. announcement. Hey, I love energy drinks, but you know what? I was starting to have issues with my heart, too. Just saying, like, my heart would start fluttering so bad that I felt like I was going to pass out. So it was kind of an awakening call to me. I switched over. I'm no more. Um, So I would recommend it. I think it would be healthier. So if any of you are out there, you guys are super just hooked on these things that's probably that's like a real addiction that's when we're yeah. talking about addictions early like <laughs> genuine yep. this was a problem and yeah. i would encourage you guys as well if i can do it you can do it no matter what death stranding is telling you to do right do They're not like... drink monster you know what i'm saying <laughs> What How did Monster shiz? make it out of Dude, there? I don't know, but they must have given Kojima like a bunch of money to <laughs> be in that loads. game. loads. If yeah. you guys don't know, Death Stranding is just like Mountain Dew, or sorry, not Mountain Dew, Monster uh, Central. Monster, so yeah. 
It, it, that, <laughs> he's all over that game. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, so my re- my recommendation is Return of the Obra Dinn, which is Ooh. like, it's a murder mystery. Yes. And you're and an it, the insurance art agent. Cool. Yeah. It's like super, it's like black and white. It's almost, um, it reminds me of olden, uh, well, basically like that black and white style can change. You can change it to different co- old computer monitors, if that makes sense. So there's yeah, like, like old a Macintosh games. one. Yeah. So kind there's like, like an the old Macintosh and- filter. Yeah. And different filters. And so it's based off of those kind of games, those old uh, mist type games, but less yeah. puzzly like that. Uh, a lot more like I think it's a little um, confusing at first. Well, at least not like it doesn't like show you how to do everything. It doesn't have a great tutorial or anything like that. But once you get into it and get the hang of what's going on, I mean, really, it's just pressing one button. But once you get that whole idea of what you're doing, you're trying to find like who is who and how they got murdered. And it's like 61 people and you're finding all their faces and how they're related and all this stuff. It's like this giant intertwining puzzle and it is really good. And you guys should check it out. I I don't think the gameplay is outstanding, but the, the bending that your mind will be going through is really cool. And it's a totally different experience. So go check it out. It's a cool little fun murder mystery. If you're into that kind of stuff. Return of the Oprah Den just came out like last week. So I'm loving it so far. So I cool. Recommend. Good recommendation, Deb. Yeah. I like that. All right. That is the end of episode six of the Nintendo show. Thanks everybody for listening. If you love us, if you love the way we speak on our sweet, sweet mics and talk about them Tanuki junk, uh, <laughs> we're here for you. So you can, if you have any questions, email us at the podcast at Nintendo show.com. So we can le- read your questions, uh, on our show. Uh, we are on YouTube, but mostly we are on Spotify and iTunes. We are a podcast after all, that's kind of the main spiel. So if you would love to follow us on Spotify, share, comment, rate, all that good stuff, we would totally appreciate it. Please share with your friends. Give this thing spread it around the world. It really helps us out. And yeah. That's, that's awesome. It. Cool. Yeah. Well, we love y'alls. Thanks for listening. Yep. yep. Thanks for listening to the show. Bye. Woo. Here we go. Off the rails. Don't you know it's time to raise our sails It's freedom like you never knew Don't need bags or a pass Say a word, I'll be there in a flash You could say my hat is off to you Oh, we can zoom all the way to the moon Oh, this great wide wacky world Jump with me, grab coins with me